Hello, this is an uh, additional video for lecture Haskell 5 uh, because we ran out of time and I didn't finish talking about the reverse Polish notation. So just to quickly recap notations, we have three possible placements of the operator uh, in the context of arguments. So for the binary functions, binary functions which take two arguments, um, binary functions, we have the following possibilities. We can put the operation in the middle. So for example, if I say 10 multiply by two, the multiplication is in the infix in fixed notation because it's in the middle. The operands are on both sides of the operation and we have an infix uh, operation. If we put the operation first and then follow up with the arguments, we will have a prefix or Polish notation. Uh, and if we do the opposite, if we reverse, so we say we have two, 10 and plus, we would call it postfix or reversed Polish notation. Reverse Polish notation, RPN. Um, stuck. So a concept of a stack is we can imagine it as a data structure where we have sort of an operands or arguments being added on top of one another. So if we, we typically talk about um, two operations, uh, pop, uh, picks an element from a stack and push, pushes an element on top of a stack. We can consider a number to be without push. Um, so push 20 will push 20 on top of the stack. Uh, push 10 will push 10 on top of the stack. So after this operation, um, if we represent stack as a list um, and we have a list with the hat on the left hand side. So a normal Haskell list. Um, so if we start with the stack being an empty list after push 20, we'll have a stack with 20 in it. And after push 10, we'll have a stack where 10 is as in the head and 20 has been pushed to the bottom. So we kind of have um, uh, uh, last in, first out kind of a queue, right? So this is um, for last in, first out queue. All right, so then if I do pop, I will then have again 20 on, the, on top of the stack. And if I do pop again, I will have only empty stack left, right? So we can do the same. We can do again the same. So we can push 10, push 20, and then do a plus operation. So here we will have um, 10, 10 on the stack. Here we will have 20 on top of the stack followed by 10 and push will fetch two arguments from the stack, which is 10 and uh, 20 and 10, and it will edit and it will put the result on top of the stack. So it will consume those two arguments and then put 30 on top of the stack. If we imagine that numbers are pushed into the stack, stack automatically, so we can delete the push operation. Sorry. Um, 
pop stays as it is, we will have this behavior. And this behavior is quite interesting because the, all the operands kind of come in our program first and then the operations come after. So if we rewrite it in a single sequential list, it would be something like this. And we can chain um, operations such that we do them one by one. So for example, um, if we have 1 plus 2 multiplied by 10, uh, the result of course is 30, but we have to use brackets and we're using infix notation. So if we were to rewrite it in the postfix notation and the reverse Polish notation, the last argument 10 would be the first to go into the stack. Then we have argument 2 and 1. We will do plus plus operation first and then we will follow with multiplication. And the result of this would also be 30 and we will do it by sequentially running all the operations on the values on the stack. So I will go one by one to explain how it works. So we're going from left to right. we putting 10 on top of the stack. Then we putting 2 on top of the stack. So we have our stack like this and then we putting 1. So after the first three numbers are read from the input, we have our stack in this form. So this is our stack and then there is a first operation to do and this operation is plus. Um, this operation takes two arguments from the stack, adds them together and put, puts back the result onto the top of the stack. So in our case, that would mean we have this. And then the next operation is multiplication and this op operation again takes two arguments from the stack adds them together and then pushes back the result. So the stack after the last operation will be 30. Why we talk about the stack and why we talk about the operands? Because we can make an arbitrary complicated processing using this notation, this postfix notation. So we can define functions which takes which take take arguments from the stack and push push back the results of our operations onto the stack. And those operations can be anything. Uh, pop could be one operation that we could use. Um, we can use other operations. We could even have control structures. We could have type system. So we could have a string. So let's say hello. And then this string literal pushes hello on top of the stack and then we can have a print operation which fetches the argument from the stack and prints them to the screen. We can have if statements so we can for example say if 10 is bigger than 2 so if we read it in the reverse Polish notation. Actually, it's um, two is the first argument for the left-hand side of our operation, and 10 is the second argument to be on the right-hand side of our operation because we pushing the arguments on top of the stack. So 10 goes first and two goes second. So two is the first one to be fetched. So this is a condition. And then we can have an if statement. Uh, and then we can have two blocks of code, which represent the true branch and false branch. And then we can have uh, operations done. We can basically do programming using a reverse Polish notation and um, using stack as an argument for all the operations that we have in our program. This concept has uh, been explored before. And most notably, uh, let me just quickly open a new window. It has been explored in the fourth uh, programming language, 
which is an example of a concatenative uh, programming. It has a, a very nice properties, but it's a little bit awkward to, to use. This kind of explains um, how the programs are written and how we can uh, conduct operations in the, in the reverse Polish notation style. So I encourage you to check fourth. Um, also, uh, fourth is quite old. So it has been um, kind of um, used 50 years ago, 50, 40, 40 years ago. Um, there is a, a modern um, re-implementation with some of the modern uh, features, uh, JSON parsing and all that, but it also uses this reverse Polish notation. And this language is called Factor. Um, factor code and it is um, a modern concatenative language which uses a very nice notion of quotations it has some uh, special operators and again it, it's a little bit tricky to use it because you have to start thinking in this um, concatenative way but it allows you to combine functions quite nicely. So, um, so applicative languages, the Rust being a, a good example, use this kind of notion of how we are passing um, how we are passing the parameter to the functions and how we are passing results of one function to another. So in the concatenative languages, you can see we sort of, because the arguments are on the left hand side and then the functions are being read from left to right, we have a very nice property of results of this computation being passed to this function and results of those computations being passed to this function, which is um, very linear and very con concise. Uh, it, it has kind of the same feel as um, functional programming, but in functional programming, we have it uh, reversed like in Haskell. So uh, let me just copy this here. Yeah, let's copy the whole thing. All right, so in concatenative language, this would be written like this. So let me do this as an example of Rust. Okay, and this would be an example of fourth. I don't know if the code, they don't know fourth about factor. Nope. Anyway, um, and then if we were to So in Haskell, that would be actually x is being passed to foo, and the results of this are passed to bar, and that is passed to bas, right? And then because we're using this as a single function composition, we would have to take into brackets, or we would have to say bas, bar, foo, and then say x. Right, so those two are equivalent notations, and as you see, uh, reading this code, we have to do it kind of reading from right to left, whereas in the concatenative language, we're reading it from left to right. So there is some some beauty in that. So fourth and factor are examples of the concatenative languages, and we will have a, a lab. lab um, using this kind of a reverse Polish notation for doing some operations on lists and on strings, for example. Um, so I will leave this. Um, I will leave this in the RPM Calc Basics as an explanations for some of the discussions. So. Con
languages and Okay, so why it is a big deal? Well, people in 70s thought it is a big deal because it allows us to form sentences or short, um, short uh, sentence-like structures which actually form a, a program. Because all you need to do is you form a, a certain vocabulary for yourself and then you form processing based on this vocabulary by writing it one after the other uh, in a left to right fashion. So you may have some uh, structures like, uh, let, me, let me just quickly check it. Uh, build vocabulary so it, it renders itself to very nice um, uh, very nice uh, okay this one I thought it would be a bit simpler so it has programs like this. So you have uh, literals and then you have certain operations on the right and then you do functions on what has happened before and you're kind of reading it from left to right. Um, so I, I thought it would be a little bit... Um, so yeah, here is a, a for example, a, um, a, a program where we start with cement and then we say there is a 10 foot pile and it basically processes what we are what we are saying from left to right and by executing cement first doing this and then it says okay 10 foot and three inches pile of cement uh, or we can say dry sand and then it kind of uh, re returns the tonnage the how how something weights based on those um, interactions or, or, or based on what has been on the stack and what, what we are doing with the, uh, with the notation. But it allows programming in a way that feels like natural language because we sort of saying cement 10 foot pile and what we mean is calculate the weight of the 10 foot pile of cement. Um, and this notation allows us to express certain complex computations in human-like, almost human-like notation. So that, that's what was driving the research in this area and that's what um, people were, were using it for because it allows this kind of a notation from left to right with the argument to what is to be processed on the left-hand side. Uh, and the normal non-concatenative language you would not be able to do that because the cement would come as an argument somewhere along somewhere either in the middle or on the right hand side but here it kind of goes cement first how much what that literal is for and then the calculation the actual verb the, the processing comes after all the arguments are already on the stack so that is how it works and I had a really fun time playing with factor uh, and using this kind of a concatenative uh, structures for solving some um, some problems and decomposing them. That's where the name ca comes from. The name comes from that you're refactoring your code such that it forms those short sentences which solve your problem. Uh, so you're trying to decompose your, your pro problem into 
uh, vocabulary that you can compose by doing this kind of left to right processing. And you initially, especially coming from functional programming or from imperative programming, you have a little bit of difficulty with this, but by refactoring your code, making it simpler and building those building blocks, you achieve a certain mastery of simplicity and, and beauty uh, in solving problems in a concatenative fashion. So I, I, I encourage you to read a little bit about this and I encourage you to read about fourth and like what it can be used for and how, how programs look like in, in that language. Uh, and you may like it. For our lab, what we will do is we will build a very mini programming language using this notation such that we decide how things work and what, what we do, how we actually implement it. And to start, we have to be able to interpret those um, um, expressions, arithmetic expressions. Uh, and those are very simple. So I start with multiplication and plus and demonstrate like the fundamentals and then you can build on top. This has been uh, implemented in this project in the RPN Calc Basics um, and it doesn't use the notion of a stack yet. It just makes it implied by the use of the accumulator, which is our stack. So how do we, how do we process? So, so there is a little bit of a, a wrapper uh, what we do is we read the input, uh, all the, uh, the, you know, we read the input interactively line by line, and then we pass pr parsing, uh, processing kind of the lines independently. So we have the process line function, which is our main processor, and it takes a line of like an expression and produces an output, which is uh, uh, another expression and in our case it would be a number or because we don't handling errors here at all it will throw you know exception if, if something goes wrong and then we have this um, very simple words parser so we parse all our tokens by the built-in function words into a, a list of strings so in our case if we have 20 and 10 and multiplication, we will get 20, 10 and multiplication as strings such that we have to deal with them in our, in our program, but they will be uh, wrapped as strings and given to us by a list of those strings, right? So that's what uh, words will do for us. It we will get all those as strings and then it's up to us how to interpret it. And the idea here is very, very trivial. Uh, what we do is we check if we have some arguments uh, on the stack and then the operation that we do is a plus. If that's the case, what we will do is we'll replace what we have on the stack with x plus y and the rest of the stack values. So we only operate on the top of the stack and the top of the stack is head and the next element of our list. Uh, we, we do the sum and then we put it back as a result. Um, if the operation is multiplication, we do the same, but we multiply x and y. So we, we fetching um, x and y from our list and then multiplying it and concatenating it with the rest of the stack. So we effectively doing what we were just discussing here for, um, for doing the operation, right? If we get 10, so if, if, if it is not plus or multi multiplication, we assume it is a number. And then what we do is we basically put it on top of the stack. So the, the conversion from a string to a number is done by this read x, uh, read y. This read y will convert our string argument into a number and put it on top of the stack. So we putting it as a head of our list. 
And then the, the processing is basically applying uh, fault on this list of strings. So we have an empty stack. We are applying this processing element by element, manipulating the stack as we move forward. And then we converting numbers and putting them on top of the stack if it is a number. So we can test it. So let's go back to the original notation without the extra thing. So if I say stack run, okay, I have to go, sorry, I have to go to CD RPN calc basics, stack run. Uh, uh, main nine, number nine, line number nine. Yes. We don't want tracing. Sorry. So that's our default implementation. And then if we say 10, 20 and multiply, it gives us 200. If we say one, if we say 10, uh, two, one plus first multiply after we're gonna get 30 good so it works if we pass it 10 to 1 multiply or let's say plus what's gonna happen well we're gonna have 1 plus 2 put on top of the stack which in our case will be 3 but then th that's it so in our implementation we cheat because we take the head of what we get back. So what we're going to return is we're going to return three, right? That's what we get. But that is a bit of an error because your computation normally should finish with only one value on the stack. And if you have multiple things, then probably something went wrong. So, but there is no error handling here. So then what we do if we get 10 to multiply, but then we have a symbol which uh, the parser doesn't know about. So let's say A. Well, it will throw. So read expects to read a number and read hits A and then we have a problem and we have, uh, we have an error, right? So, and the error is non-recoverable. It basically kills our interpreter, kills our program. That is un not acceptable. So in here we have to um, modify it such that it will not run an exception, but it will do something else. So maybe uh, provide us a maybe value or we need to deal with it somehow. So I will leave it for now as, a, uh, as I don't want to complicate this code too much. I'm just um, explaining that it is a very simple implementation that uses a stack and we are using a list as a backend back store for our stack with the head being the top element. So in here, we are reading it from left to right, actually. But in here, we're reading it from right to left because those elements are on top of the stack. This is on the bottom. This is on top, right? OK, um, there is one more implementation. And this, uh, let me just show you. RPN calc. This implementation is much more mature and much more um, robust, such that it is much easier to implement much harder operations using this implementation. So this implementation uses monads. And we also have a process line which goes from string to string. So our main processor looks exactly the same, but we have two extra things. We have a val state and we have um, a tuple. 
we have if the processing finished with an error or not and what is our stack what the the so we have here uh, the processing errors or not and the the stack is current version of the stack and we have a little bit more complicated uh, processing because things can go wrong so for example instead of read token we uh, read using read maybe and then read maybe may return nothing and then we have a parsing error right so in the second case if i go yeah, let's keep this here if i go yeah i am already in the calculator so if i say stack run And if I say 10, 200 times, uh, it says I have a right hand side because the return of our computing is either left with errors or right. And in our case, it's no problem. If I have 10, 20 plus A, I will have on top of the stack, I have a parsing error. So the parsing error is that uh, a is not a number and it expected a number, right? So I have this error. But this operation, because we're doing it from left to right, actually completed correctly. So we got 10 plus 20, or, or in, in fact, 20 plus 10, uh, which is 30. And this is on the bottom of the stack. So again, this is a list uh, which represents, so uh, show me. Let, let me show you. So you see, I entered 10, 20, 30. So now I have on the stack 30, 20, 10. So this is the top of the stack, next element and next element. So it's the same as with the error. The error was the last thing that we did. So it's the first thing on our stack. And then this operation succeeded and we have the operation result on the stack. And on the stack, I have either an error or a value. So this is my way of dealing with, um, with errors and keeping them in the same sort of a stack structure. So you can study this. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, and for example, multiplication checks because you, know, you, you can have another error. You can have an er error like this. You can have 10 multiply. It's like, okay, you don't have enough arguments for multiplication. Multiplication takes two arguments, but we only have one on the stack. So we don't have enough elements, so we cannot do this. Uh, so we have now an error for trying to do this. And then the remaining element on the stack is 10. So this is on the bottom of the stack. And instead of multiplication, we have a, an error. Um, our original... RPN calc basics cannot deal with this. So if we say stack run and we say 10 multiply, we gonna again have um, a runtime exception because again, we're trying to read um, this as a number because we are expecting to at least have two elements on the stack. If we don't, this is not interpreted as an operation. This is interpreted as a number and read, you know, cannot treat it as a number. So we have the, the basics are simple to get your head around the notion of a stack and how the fold can kind of fold our operations into a stack. And then the, this, op, this one is much more complex using monads. You can implement the same thing um, without using monads just using the recursive function which evaluates um, your stack your operations and stack one by one so you pass you parse all the input first you generate what is the stack and what is your op operations that you need to do and then you can combine it by a, a functional composition with the using a simple recursive evaluator uh, and that is what i recommend i recommend starting with the recursion 
uh, and then going into a monad once you understand what benefits this code gives you because there is quite a lot of text to write um, and with the recursive evaluation it will be not much longer than this um, maybe even a little bit shorter because you you will yeah, yeah, you, you need to judge it. So for this one, I implemented multiplication plus and pop, and your task will be to extend it into the more complicated uh, programming language. So I hope it gives you some insights into what the concatenative languages are about, and I can uh, put um, here some resources. I'll put fourth and factor as things to check. All right, so I will push it into the repository now and you can um, browse the code and get your head around a little bit and try to implement minus division and then think about what, how you want to treat the numbers and how would you treat the strings um, such that you can use words to parse it but have a little bit more richer type system if you were to deal with strings. Okay, thank you very much.